2018, he has some war medals on him. There was no war to be had. Yeah, as in he uh, did not fight in anything. He liked pretty things. Um, now I'll tell you a couple of stories. Eventually a war breaks out. And the war is between Austria and Prussia. Austria is like the friendly neighbor. Prussia is the kingdom way up in the north. It's like the big powerhouse. They're going to win no matter what. And so he has to choose sides. So what does the real king do? He chooses sides. He goes to Wagner and he says, Wagner, I will exile myself to you. As in, I don't like the idea of war. What do you think about that? And Wagner said, um, <clears throat> you pay my bills. You should get back to Munich. Yeah? And so he chose sides, he chose Austria. Austria, of course, and with Bavaria was no match for the Prussians. So, as a result of this war, they had to sign a document saying, whenever we go to war, we're going to, well, or whenever Prussia goes to war, we're going to give boys to the war. So, important for later. Now, the king goes through the war-torn area, everything's safe. He's shaking his people's hands. He's young, as in he, he lives in the summer castles. He does not go to Munich where he should be. And so eventually he's going to marry. There's talk of a woman in his life. Did you ever hear of Cece, the Austrian princess? It's a little, little tiny waist, really pretty thing. Um, that's his first cousin. Not her, but her frumpy little sister. So he's supposed to marry Sophie Charlotte. Sophie Charlotte has an affair with a man who's taking their wedding photographs. Probably not the best idea she ever had, yeah? <laughs> yeah? And so eventually he's pushing the wedding date off. No, not his 21st birthday, later, later. And then eventually he says, you know what? No, I am not going to marry you. And that was the last talk of a woman in his life. I will not tell you that he is homosexual because we do not know that. I will not tell you that he's asexual, because we don't know that. I will make the joke that no straight man paid that much attention to that much detail. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah? Um, well, the inside, of course, tons and tons of detail. We're going to see it in a bit. Um, I will also tell you that there were tons of women who said, is that your castle? And you have two others. And they twirled their fingers through their long, beautiful hair and said, I'm actually quartering you. And he said, oh, no, no, I don't have any time on Friday night. No thanks. And so that happened until he was 40 years of age. So um, you can do your own research and try to figure that one out. Yeah? Now, the castle itself, technological marvel of its time. First stone was set there in uh, 1869. And they, they had a steam crane that the king invented, he hired people, to invent this steam crane, to push rocks up here. Where do you get the rocks from? Italy, really far away. Who gets them? Anybody, I'll pay top mark. As in he paid a ton of money for everything. 40 artists, four years, just to do the paintings inside of the castle. Wow. So he also had electricity. Electricity was a marvel, as in wow. Um, wasn't up to today's standards, but good, fair enough. He had a telephone. They went from this castle down to the castle below, where his mom lived, and to the post office. So he wasn't doing too much calling, but he had a telephone. He also had a toilet inside of his bedroom. You'll see there's his bed with all of the top of the, the wooden carving pieces, really beautiful. And then if you look to the left, you'll see a swan sink. And to the left again, there's like a little cubicle with his wooden toilet seat, some leather over it. It's a bit strange, but you could flush it. Amazing, yeah? So, um, I'll tell you a bit more. He eventually, of course, um, well, there's another war, and he has to put these boys into war. It's Prussia this time against France. And so he goes, darn, I have to put those boys into war because of what I signed. And what does the real king do? Goes to Wagner and says, Wagner, I don't like this, what shall I do? And Wagner said, um, are you kidding? That's Prussia, you don't mess with Prussia. Prussia will just beat France and come back around and get you. He said, ah, good point. So he gets back, he puts the boys into war. Building this castle, building his other two, Linderhof and Herrenkimsey, actually cost less money than clothing those boys, giving them supplies and sending them off to war. So another reason, yeah. Um, well, as a result of this war, it's very important. As in Prussia wins, France is defeated, all of the kingdoms have to kind of work together because of these defense treaties, and um, well, well, Germany unifies. 1871, there was a massive ceremony at the Hall of Mirrors. You have to picture just beautiful grandeur, every person of any importance, the, the aristocrats, as in um, everyone's very formally dressed. I'll even show you a picture of the, the Hall of Mirrors. He made a replica in one of his castles, and he made it longer and better. Good. Well done. Well done, Ludwig, yeah? So this is the idea, as in this type of formality. 
or formal ceremony. Yeah? So in a beautiful hall like this, um, every person was there except for, yeah, except for Ludwig. Ludwig didn't like this idea of giving up a bit of power to, for the kingships, yeah? Um, so he basically sent his baby brother. His brother Otto was going crazy. And so Otto was going around the ceremony looking under women's skirts, tickling them, and putting his fingers in their drinks. So needless to say, he left that ceremony and he got his own castle. <laughs> you can stay there, Otto, yeah? Um, and the king actually, he goes into a bit more of a, kind of like a depression. As in, he knows that his aunts are also mentally ill. One aunt swore that she swallowed a glass piano. It's a bit rough to begin with, yeah? She swallowed a glass piano. At one point, she had to cough it up, and it was excruciating, and that's what she talked about all day long. Good. She had her own castle as well. And another aunt would only wear white. Everything around her was also decked in white, as in it was extremely clean. And if any dirt was on anything, she would have her clothes torn off, everything washed, everything immediately at some point in time she had 250 people in the castle just with the job of washing white linen she had her own castle yeah as in the king in the 1800s it wasn't really terribly researched people didn't understand schizophrenia but he knew that it could run in his family and maybe perhaps he could get it also Richard Wagner marries throws him into a bit more of a depression. We also don't understand the relationship between them could have been his mentor or something more but he really cared about him so, um, eventually, he's, he becomes kind of nocturnal. He doesn't have a drinking problem. He becomes, well, he just kind of gets a, a building problem. So, builds more castles. <laughs> so, he has Linderhof, and he has Herren Kimsey. I'll show you a couple more. And these are in the middle of, uh, well, first off, that was the one from Herren Kimsey on a big island that I showed you at the Hall of Mirrors. So, just east, southeast of Munich. Linderhof just has beautiful, beautiful gardens. I don't have a very good picture of it here. Uh, let's see, one of these, somewhere. Good, somewhere in here. I'll show it to you later. Um, but it basically, um, ah, there it is, right here. This white castle in the front, beautiful gardens outside. And so, he keeps putting himself into more debt. He gets about five million marks per year. Five million marks means like billions, practically. As in nowadays, it's so much money. And so he got this money, and he actually went over that amount of money, put himself into 20 million marks of debt. And his mother said, I'll sell my ungodly huge Bavarian riches, and I'll help you pay off your debt. Just stop building. Stop building things. And he said, oh, no, no. I have ideas. I said, I'm going to build a Chinese temple, a Byzantine palace. I'm going to build Falkenstein. Falkenstein is the epitome of Disney. As in, that is Disney, if you've ever seen anything Disney like before. As in, Falkenstein was supposed to be his fourth castle. And you can tell that that was fairy tale. That was magical. And so even for this castle, what he had to do is he went to architects and he said, draw me fairy tale. And they said, okay, one tower. And he said, no, no, I want, I want majestic. I want magical. And they said, oh, good, got it. Two towers. And he's like, no, no, no. So he went to Christian Yank, which was the back, you know, the backdrop drawer for all of the beautiful operas. And he said, you make me fairy tale. Took these beautiful, basically, pictures, handed them over to engineers and architects and said, had fun. Just go ahead. And they said, wow, we've never seen anything like this before in our lives. And so that's how this started. And that's how, of course, Falkenstein was also being planned. But he actually died before it was built. Or else he'd already be there, right? So um, uh, this is a bit about his death. As in, of course, he died at the young age of 40, and it was a very tragic death. And what happens is, um, well, he keeps putting himself into more debt. And then there's a plan to take him off a of throne. Four psychiatrists from Munich, one uh, by the name of Dr. Gooden, evil Dr. Gooden, he has bright blue eyes, he looks evil, very serious in pictures. Dr. Gooden actually um, deems him mentally ill without ever meeting him being filmed the whole time. <laughs> Deems him mentally ill. Um, doesn't know anything about him. There's not one good thing about him on this list. Just rumors or bad things. So, some of the cool rumors were he brought his horse to dinner. And at some point his horse is eating from a, a silver platter and gets angry and kicks some china. We're all animal lovers, aren't we? We would love to bring our horses to dinner, yeah? I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes us happy, yeah? Um, he also had, not in this castle, but in the other two castles, he could sit down in his dining room, his table, 
would go into the ground below and it would set itself by the servants below in the kitchen. His table would come back up and he could dine alone. That's not crazy, that's cool. Yeah? <laughs> we would all like something like that. He also wanted to connect this castle to the castle down below with like a catapult slide. That would also be amazing. But the family said that costs a lot of money and it's dangerous. And so they paid the engineers a ton of money to say, uh -uh, no, that's a bad idea. And then he said, oh, I know. I'll connect this castle with the castle below with a big wire. And on this wire, there'll be a hot air balloon going up and down. Hot air balloons survive on their own. As in, the, that's what could be safer. And the family paid the engineers a ton of money to say, we can build a castle there, but we can't put a wire anywhere. So he didn't get his hot air balloon. Isn't that depressing, yeah? And so the list goes on and on, things like this. He was a bit strange because, like I said, he wasn't in Munich drinking in the beer, you know, in the beer halls. He wasn't, well, hanging on women. And um, so that was a bit strange to the people as well. And so eventually they come to get him. And they go to the wrong castle. Um, they go to a castle below. And so what happens? Well, they said, ah, that one's far away. And so they um, sat there that night and they drank. And they drank and they told the um, stable boy, they said, we're just going to get your king tomorrow. Yes, wonderful. Their king employs whole towns, as in their king employs maybe the mother, the cousin, the everyone to grow the food, to go get the, you know, the statues, as in to go make them. How do you make statues? I don't know. Go to Italy and bring someone back, as in he paid a ton of money. If you got hurt working on the castle, you actually were sent home. He paid for all of your hospital bills, or doctor bills, and, and also gave you one third of your wages, so you could at least survive until you could work again. I'm not sure that even exists today, yeah? As in, wow. So, something like that. Um, and so people loved him. The next day when they go to the correct castle, well, there at 4 o'clock in the morning even, there's a line of men, the police officers, everyone who cared, saying, you're not taking him, there's nothing wrong with him. And so the plan was thwarted, and they do get him officially on June the 12th, 1886. And this is the day before he is last alive. Oh, so. No. Yeah, should I just leave you in suspense? That was it, guys. All right, finish it. <laughs> and so um, what actually happens is he gathers up his belongings from his room. He goes on an eight-hour carriage ride, which is back to basically the two-hour train ride just south of Munich. Goes to a big lake called Starnberg. And he has a summer castle there called Berg Castle. And this is something from his childhood that he actually really liked. And it had bars on the window suddenly. It had holes through the doors, as in locks as well, so that you could see what he's doing, as if he's very mentally ill. And so he writes to Cece, his cousin, who didn't cheat on him, yeah? <clears throat> he writes to Cece, and he writes, you know, you're eagle, and she writes, you're a dove. And he watches the letter be delivered across the lake, because she happens to be across the lake at her summer castle. And the following day, he meets the doctor for the first time. They go for a two-hour walk. You imagine that conversation probably wasn't the best. You deemed me mentally ill, I don't like you, yeah? Um, and in the evening time, at the king's request, he goes out for another walk with the king. And this is the last time he is seen alive. And so at 8 p.m. when they're supposed to be back, all of the servants, they go out looking for them. And they find on a bench the king's umbrella and then his jacket, his jacket kind of torn off in haste, thrown there, which is very strange. I mean, if the king's going to take off his jacket, if he's even going to take off his jacket, it's going to be very nicely and set it down. In the water, they found both of their hats, and then right beyond their hats were both of their bodies. What do you think happened? They killed themselves? Could be, right? Could be both suicides. They were making out. They were... Um, <laughs> um, yes, they were murdered. Yeah, yeah, it could be both murdered. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was left officially on the report that it was a murder-suicide. And so uh -huh. the king was angry, somehow killed the, of course, killed the doctor, and then, uh, well, committed suicide. The only problem with that is there, were, there was no water in his lungs. Oh, the doctor killed and committed suicide. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah it could be yeah, either way, right? Um, and so there was no water in actually the, the king's lungs. And he was found face up in the water, and he was to have drowned. Mm -hmm. And so that's a bit strange. Also, there was talk of a bullet hole in his jacket. But the jacket mysteriously burned in a fire a week later. Good. So then there were also carriage tracks that came exactly up to where they were and then took careful care to go exactly back, which just made it look like the carriage disappeared, mm. which obviously it didn't, unless magic was involved. I haven't thought about that. Actually. <laughs>
So um, then there was one more cat. 